Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ferrari F50 Barchetta. It's a 124 scale kit from C.C. Lee, number 01182. Now the Ferrari 50 was a, a middle engine sports car built uh, between 95 and 97, uh, based on the iconic F40. Now some consider it the best street Ferrari ever, uh, and it was the last Ferrari to have an actual Formula One engine. The price on these cars is pretty stellar as well, selling for nearly three quarters of a million dollars. There were only 349 built. Now, it was built to commemorate, or released to commemorate the uh, 50th anniversary of Ferrari, but like its manufacturer, this kit's no longer in production, but they can still be readily found at reasonable prices at online auction sites. The model has about 80 pieces. It's molded in red, black, silver, and clear plastic. It has vinyl tires and water slide decals, and an electric motor with related hardware if you wish to install them. Although it's a pretty simple kit, fit issues require some advanced skills. Now the kit's instruction manuals look to be Chinese, and when you're done, the final dimensions are seven and a quarter inches long, three and a quarter inches wide, and about two inches high. Oh, hey, that must be uh, Newt, our program director. Uh, hi, Newt. Um, glad you could join us online. Hey, are you ready to get going? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I've already done the intro. Okay, but let me check that over before you post it. <laughs> uh, so, what do you think of this model? It's beautiful, but I've never heard of C.C. Lee models. When did they make this? Uh, well, they were known for military kits mostly back in the 90s. Uh, actually making direct copies of other manufacturers' kits. Uh, but they made a few automotive kits then, too. It looks pretty fast. Can you still buy one of those cars? Well, yes, um, and it should be fast. With over 500 horsepower, they only made a few, and all our own bike collectors. But the last one I saw for sale went for three quarters of a million dollars. Here are the contents of the kit. You can see the electric motor there near the upper right uh, with its related hardware. Now, each of the um, different colors here seems to be made of a different plastic formula, probably owing to the fact that uh, this is dual-purposed as a uh, toy, you know, to be motorized, but they react differently to adhesives, so we'll be using a variety of glues uh, to put this together, and some white or crystal clear glue for the um, uh, clear pieces as well. Now remember to heed the manufacturer's use and safety guidelines for any of the products you see or hear in the review. Now there's a small sheet of uh, colorful decals for this kit, but the register was off a little bit, uh, and, and there seems to, to be some variation between the left and right sides, but um, in this case uh, they were unusable because they, they just disintegrated in water, uh, so I wasn't able to use the decals on my, um, my sample. Now here you see the, uh, the motor and related pieces and a few tires. Now, I did not uh, use the motor because uh, I really just wanted a scale model. I uh, wasn't interested in motorizing it. Uh, so, I've got a spare. Take these three pieces out of the kit and uh, we'll be using those to start assembly with the motor. Um, but it is fraught with uh, many, many uh, ejector pin marks. And um, it, be because of there's so many, they would have destroyed detail anyway, so I just left them as is. The um, silver uh, molded pieces didn't seem to react well to the thin cement that I was using, uh, so you may want to uh, switch to a, um, a CA type glue or, you know, one of the um, other types of MEK formulated adhesives. I used a few props to keep the uh, motor pieces in alignment as it dried. Well, the Parts had a little bit of warpage in different directions uh, when I tried to mate the top and bottom halves of the motor together, so I had used quite a few clamps to uh, get them to come together so that the um, seams would knit. Here is the uh, body shell, and uh, this plastic uh, seemed to be more like a styrene kit that we're familiar with as it reacted well to the thin cement, and um, it's pretty soft. It's so soft, in fact, that uh, both the vent pillars there, vent posts on the side, windows, uh, were were kind of crushed. Um, they, they, you can see the white mark there where they had gotten splayed outwards on both sides. I marked the um, the parting lines here in uh, 
black marker. It's a little different than the normal um, quarter panel marks, so you'll have to uh, look for those to uh, clean those up. I, I used a, um, a soft uh, sanding sponge and I glued the triangular windows into place there to, to uh, force the pillars into position and keep them there. Uh, like that, they've got uh, full support and, and they probably will be okay through construction. With them being supported by the uh, clear window piece, I, I sanded them down so that uh, they looked more uh, proper uh, and took out some of the bend from the crushing effect. And then uh, after that, I just uh, uh, polished it up so that it looked more natural. As a precaution, then, I um, uh, covered the windows with some masking tape uh, to keep them from getting any glue or paint on them as I worked on the body. So I switched back uh, to the engine because it had finally dried and set in position. But you can see here um, the exhaust manifolds have got ejector pin marks on them and they're kind of pointing in different directions. Um, you can do your best to, to make it look like a proper unit, but it's, it's really not a very good rendition. Uh, I taped the rear wing into position uh, and then let that set and dry. And once that was done, I put a little tape on each side of, uh, of a join here uh, for the uh, lower and upper half of the pieces. Uh, and then uh, you can see here I, I left it open so that I could putty that, that seam that shouldn't be there. Uh, and then I used some Tamiya putty uh, to go ahead and, and uh, putty that up. And when it was mostly dried, uh, I removed the masking tape. And I had then uh, a narrow strip of putty to sand to the level. So then I, I did that. I sanded that smooth with some progressive uh, grits of sandpaper and uh, got rid of that unsightly uh, joint. And so I did a test fit here with the um, upper and uh, lower halves of the body. And um, it, it wasn't too bad. So uh, I glued the air intakes into position. And um, then we start uh, let that set for, to dry. I sprayed the uh, engine with a little bit of uh, light gray primer, surfacer, and then uh, I did what I could to clean up some of the, um, the issues with the motor. And next I did the same thing with the body, uh, mostly to find out where the uh, problems were. And as I suspected, uh, that joint line needed a little bit more work. To uh, take a break from the uh, <laughs> issues on the body and the motor, I decided to pull out some of the interior pieces. And then uh, these parts uh, needed a lot less work for preparation and assembly. And the inserts on the seats were sprayed with some, uh, some of the uh, Italian red over the gray primer. I finished the seats off uh, by brush, hand brushing with a little uh, satin black. And I add a little carbon fiber decal from my kit uh, stash uh, to the cockpit there, as you can see. I uh, removed the seats. Um, they were mock fit, and then uh, I sprayed the, um, the the carbon fiber decal with a little Tamiya smoke there for more realism and uh, subdued look on to uh, make it look really nice. And as you can see, the door interiors received the uh, same treatment uh, with the, um, the carbon fiber decal and the smoke treatment. I uh, placed some uh, on the center line of the dashboard too uh, to give it a full carbon fiber effect. So um, I went back to the uh, rear body, that uh, joint line there, and uh, after sanding and sanding, I realized I was going to sand right through the body wall, so um, I did the best I could with it and had to leave it at that point. Now the main body had fewer issues, just the rear corners, uh, they needed some touch up with, uh, with a light sanding. I did notice the wheel arch there just over the uh, left front wheel needed a little bit of uh, shaping so I gave that a light sanding as well. Uh, removable top and hardware there, they were fine. Just primed those and got them uh, ready to dry. This time I sprayed the rear deck lid there in uh, black uh, as an undercoat for the, uh, the gold base. Same thing for the other related pieces. Um, you can see the, uh, the roof here and the main body, um, they were all um, coated with um, a nice thick coat of black primer. And the reason for that is, of course, the dreaded red styrene. Um, red and yellow plastics are the worst ones to work with because they bleed through the paint. So about the only way I've found to really block that is to paint them with some black primer. So I used um, three 
three light layers um, uh, of paint all together and uh, the uh, first the black then a gold base and then a red color to block the bleed and the gold for an underlay for a nice tone on the red. Um, the nose air inlets there on the uh, hood indents they needed a little reshaping so sanded those into into com submission. After a light sanding I um, staged the body uh, and then gave that the um, base coat with uh, a gold paint. Just uh, uh, This came from Rust-Oleum um, and uh, it was uh, then uh, decanted and diluted with little xylene. With the body drying because of um, the fact that it's going to be handled here again pretty soon, uh, I went back to the engine and uh, I sprayed that with some testers uh, steel lacquer and um, it, it was looking better and better uh, but still some issues remain. So with the, uh, the body and the engine drying I went back to the interior and uh, you can see some seat belts there and some metallic um, uh, pen uh, designs on the console etc for, for uh, something to look at visual uh, breakup there. So as you see here are uh, the first coats of um, the um, bright red paint. Um, it's a bit on the dull side. It'll be um, um, set for sanding after that dries. And it didn't take much. The body was in pretty good shape, uh, you know, from previous uh, preparations. And so um, the main coat was dry, then a color coat uh, sanding, uh, and then another coat uh, to get it to the full full uh, color base. And now I'll show you how the uh, the gold underlying base there has such an effect on the uh, color um, right through the top coats of red uh, in different lighting situations. You can see here that uh, it shines uh, pretty well. It's it's kind of a bright, you can almost pick out the gold base from it. But uh, under different conditions um, you can see uh, that the color tone really changes with differing light. And in this picture it's the same way like the previous ones um, except that the a light was increased and is more of a daylight and uh, it has quite an effect on the visual uh, appearance with a nice underlayment. Now here the body has been painted with a, um, uh, a couple of coats of a two-part urethane that's automotive uh, clear coat. And while that sets and dries I started uh, to work on the wheels, um, wheel assemblies and uh, I got those out of the box and they're nice uh, renditions of the original uh, but they were a little difficult to clean they had a lot of flash on them. Now the tires look pretty good as a uh, casting but they were they were kind of glossy uh, so I gave them a um, uh, an overspray uh, with some kind of a, a grayish black uh, mix of acrylics uh, to give them a more realistic tone. And then the uh, the backs of the wheels that were were kind of wrong and so I modified the inner hub for a better fit. Finally here are the completed wheels uh, with little red tone accents there and uh, ready for installation. As I mentioned I didn't um, use the motor uh, that was supplied with the kit so I filled the uh, battery slot there with um, a sheet a little piece of sheet styrene uh, to fill that void. So um, when that's set and drying, I started working again on detailing the engine, uh, picking out some details using metallic shades. Um, you can see some gunmetal there and some dark uh, washes on the steel for the mufflers and exhaust, um, and almost a heat uh, look, heat looking burnt scorched exhaust pipe section up front, um, and just to you know use uh, some uh, detailing to make it look more interesting. I added some uh, plug wires for the final and final painting touches for that uh, and set that aside to dry as well. In the meantime I detailed the dash uh, with a chrome pen, uh, added the steering wheel and installed the dash in the slots on the uh, interior uh, cockpit there. And then um, I dry fitted that along with the um, uh, chassis to the motor to see how that f would uh, go together. Okay, well, as expected, it, it, it's not a perfect fit. Um, you'll need to do a little uh, persuasion here and cajoling to get the exhaust uh, to point out in a proper place. But um, it looks really good, and it's very um, 
very detailed. Now I knew that the engine would fit. Um, I went back to the body for some detailing, and uh, I I brush painted uh, with some acrylic uh, some of the details in the body, like the uh, window frame and the um, sun visors there with uh, uh, different shades. Of course, uh, you know black and then uh, interior color for the um, you know visors. And I also prepared the cross frame and the wheel arches for. Uh, uh, some carbon fiber decals uh, by painting those silver. So next uh, I got out some of the glass uh, there uh, to prepare those clear parts and as you can see they were quite scratched from being bounced around in the kit for 20 years and um, but first I sanded the uh, uh, surfaces as you know progressively with 2000 and 3000 grit papers and then I polished um, them with some clear Novus polishing compound. Still there was a small scratch that remained at the back uh, but it looked a lot better than it did before and I would have had to do uh, extensive work to get that out. Um, after I got to, to looking at it and uh, I test fit the body shell I, I noticed that one of the exhausts was so much bigger than the other that it wouldn't fit through the holes in the back of the body so I decided to replace those uh, with some um, plastic tubing um, I actually used uh, turned out to be a little sippy straw sections but you can use evergreen plastic as well the uh, glass for the front um, headlamps uh, was pretty good uh, just a little uh, white glue to fill any gaps there around the edges and they were just fine. The um, it was time to fit the uh, body shell onto the chassis, and then of course uh, more problems. Uh, it was a bad fit overall, but I I had to um, actually reposition the dashboard uh, backwards a little bit towards the um, seats in order to get the uh, body to fit onto it. Um, and there's various ways to do that. You can just make the um, holes where they set a, a little bit further back and then do that. But then uh, I had to uh, position the body into place and use some uh, pretty good strong clamps and tape to keep everything in a position uh, so that um, it could be painted. And you can see, you know, once I got it fit together, the gap that got created between the dash and the window frame, and I filled that with some black uh, tinted white glue. So, uh, overall, kind of a bad fit, uh, corrected by force, and the floor pan was a little buckled and kept pushing things around in the wrong direction, but more clamps uh, and more force and good glue, and uh, she actually finally came together pretty well. You can see here, um, we're still, uh, we've got some clamps in the back end to keep things in position, but uh, I went ahead and installed the front wheels. Um, as they uh, they look like a good fit and got those placed. I'd also used some um, acrylic to paint the um, the belt line around the midsection of the body. Well, in trying to um, wrestle that uh, body to match the uh, the lower f section chassis, uh, the uh, exhaust tips that I had placed kept breaking off. They wouldn't they wouldn't line up to get through that hole. So what I did was uh, I just made a little styrene uh, plate to put over the, the port there, exhaust port holes, uh, painted that flat black, and then glued the exhaust tips uh, to the outside of that uh, for an exhaust appearance, which looks pretty convincing. So I added the uh, see-through engine cover to the back deck there, and that uh, black um, hinge rack there up front and forward of that I had to remove that because uh, alignment wouldn't allow the deck lid to set straight. Um, you can try and massage that if you want, uh, but uh, it was a problem for me, so I removed it. So I pulled the um, windshield out of the kit for installation, and it too, of course, had uh, a number of minor scratches on it, so I, uh, I sanded that with uh, two and 3,000 grit papers, or sponges, and then... Um, I polished it out and uh, it looked pretty good uh, and I called her done. I saw that uh, the mirrors had sinks in the back end uh, interior there so I put a little uh, styrene billet into place there uh, to smooth those out and then uh, I hit them with the chrome pen. 
After attaching the mirrors and now placing the rear deck, there you have it. Your model is finished. And uh, with an extraordinary amount of work, it actually looks pretty nice. It's a real good rendition of the F-50 because the, uh, the body proportions are very good. Uh, this kit, of course, just suffered from uh, poor molding uh, technology and maybe some bad engineering uh, for that. Uh, with all the ejector pin marks, you're never going to make a good uh, contest model out of this kit. And uh, it, it had, you know, strokes of brilliance and good detail, but overall it was such a bother uh, to put together. It will take some advanced skills for it to uh, look nice. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the plastic trees were different and had different formulas, so the glue acted differently on them. And um, the instructions, of course, are, are pretty simple to follow, but uh, they're, they're all in uh, a foreign language uh, to us. And, but the, the rarity, the subject uh, model uh, of this kit is, is uh, so nice that, um, you know, you will go to extraordinary lengths to get something that's uh, really unique and beautiful like this. And when you're done, uh, you can display it proudly. Well, we hope you like this premium scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews or you can find us on Facebook or at our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.